The next generation of console hardware is here, and while we're looking at huge improvements in system specifications, one area arguably has been a bit of a letdown, storage. Now it's not so much the speed of it, because console SSDs have been a revelation there, but rather the amount of storage that you're getting. PlayStation 5 ships with just 667 gigs of available space, and with PS4 games, well, that's where external storage connected via USB becomes an option. So, what kinds of external storage should you be looking at? Will a decent SATA SSD with a USB bridge do the trick? Or should you go for NVMe drives for maximum performance? How do these options compare to the internal PlayStation 5 SSD and should you use solid state storage at all? After all, spinning rust mechanical hard drives offer by far the best cost per gig. So that's the focus for this video, and here's the hardware we're testing. Of course, the PS5 itself features an internal M2 slot for an NVMe upgrade, but that's off the table for now. It doesn't work, and in fact, the system won't even boot if you stick a drive in right now. So here are our options. Firstly, yes, we're going to be checking out the PS5's existing internal storage. Secondly, at the opposite end of the performance spectrum, a standard 5TB Seagate external passport style drive, which is basically a 2.5-inch laptop HDD in a USB enclosure. Option 3, potentially the best overall choice based on prior Xbox testing a SATA SSD, in this case a Samsung 870 QVO drive. Now we're testing a gigantic 8TB model here, but smaller drives are essentially just as fast and a ton cheaper. But before we go on, there's one thing to stress about SATA SSD. It's important to get the right SATA to USB bridge. We're using the Sabrent adapter that we used in our Xbox Series X tests. But the PS5 actually can be quite fussy. Slower USB 3.0 adapters may not work at all and may error out, saying that they don't offer enough bandwidth. Even if those same adapters work just fine on PS4 and PS4 Pro. Lastly, our fourth pick is an NVMe SSD connected externally. We have the Samsung 980 Pro here, one of the fastest NVMe drives money can buy at the moment. Now actually, we bought this drive because at the time we believed Sony would allow us to upgrade PS5 internal storage with the latest up-to-spec NVMe drives. The 980 Pro hits that spec, but still doesn't work, unless you put it inside an NVMe to USB enclosure. For that, we have the ASUS ROG Strix Arion, a nice metallic enclosure with a USB-C type interface, and better still, an adapter for different USB connectors. Speaking of which, with this, uh, we tested the front and back USB ports of the PS5 to see if there was any difference in performance. The front has a USB-C connector and its two back ports are standard Type-A. Testing with Cyberpunk, we can confirm that there is no speed difference. Split second differences between them, margin of error really, when we're loading the same save that takes us into the big city. Margin of error stuff, as I said, and ultimately any USB port will get the same results with the same drive. At least that's what our testing told us. So let's begin with some straight up read write speed tests. A raw metric, but clearly defining the speed of each of our drives, and would also serve to highlight any potential artificial limits put in place by the console. So, taking the 102GB install of Cyberpunk 2077, transferring the game to a mechanical hard drive takes 16 minutes and 24 seconds. Now that's really slow compared to the solid state alternatives. Uh, where with the SATA SSD, the same task completed in 6 minutes 15 seconds. Better still, the NVMe drive connected via USB achieves it in 4 minutes 46 seconds, a much faster result. Copying that Cyberpunk data back to the internal drive offers up some curious and surprising results. The HDD does it in practically the same time, over 16 minutes, but the advantages of solid state storage diminish copying back to the internal drive. The SATA SSD wins out at 13 minutes 37, while the NVMe drive clocks in slower, yes slower, at 13 minutes 45. And yes, we did repeat these tests 
to double check the results. If you watched the Xbox SSD video, you'll have seen that PC parts on a console sometimes don't act as you might expect compared to their PC performance. And that's not the last time you'll see some bizarre results in this video. Read-write tests are one thing, but it's loading times that are of most importance. Looking at the best options for PS5, we tried some of the worst offenders uh, when it comes to loading screens. For last gen, the likes of Battlefield 5, Fallout 4, Cyberpunk and The Witcher 3 all stand out as some of the most bothersome. So let's kick off with Battlefield 5. The War Stories mode lets us load into any mission completely fresh and this reveals an interesting turnout for back compat loading. The result comes in at closer to 30 seconds on PS5's internal drive and the NVMe SSD while the SATA SSD rounds down just a touch to 29 seconds, but it's fundamentally a split second difference between all three solid state solutions. Meanwhile, the external hard drive comes in much later at 47 seconds. And likewise, we see a similar pattern on the Turaye mission load test. 30 seconds on the three faster options. Margin of error stuff between them, but clearly you lose a lot by going with a mechanical hard drive. Now that took 51 seconds. This is a pattern that repeats itself time and time again throughout our testing. Now given the internal PS5 drive should in theory boast faster read speeds than external equivalents, it could suggest some form of bandwidth cap on PS4 apps. It's a very curious result overall, but it is consistent. In fact, so often we actually see our external SSD and NVMe drives outperform the PS5 internal drive, unbelievably. We see it in Fallout 4 loading to the Commonwealth area. 18 seconds on the internal drive and one to two seconds faster on the USB connected solid state alternatives. And again, we have the Diamond City test which shows the PS5 internal drive at 17 seconds up against 13 on the external solid state storage solutions. So yeah, kind of weird that. Uh, the mechanical hard drive, this trails significantly behind at 36 seconds. CD Projekt Red's games are also fascinating tests. Both Cyberpunk and Witcher 3 demand lengthy initial loads from the main menu, and there's more loading still when fast traveling between areas. For Cyberpunk, we see the same rollout though, loading to the Chinatown area. The internal PlayStation 5 drives actually trails external solutions by a few seconds. 41 internally versus 40 on a SATA SSD and 39 on the NVMe. The saving is huge on the external hard drives, near 58 seconds. Likewise, loading to the Maelstrom as HQ puts those two external SSDs at precisely the same 31 second result, down to the frame, next to 33 on the PlayStation 5 internal drive. So, it sounds weird, but perhaps this is good news. You lose nothing by playing PS4 games directly from an external drive, as long as it's a decent solid state storage solution. That said, it seems there's a clear ceiling to speeds and the advantage the 980 Pro NVMe shows in the game transfer tests just doesn't bear out in game loading. It's borne out in our Xbox Series X tests too, and again suggests the smart money is on a good quality SATA drive rather than splashing out on much more expensive alternatives. One test to prove the point. The Witcher 3 of course featured some of the most notorious loading times on last gen. In fact, Novigrad City Center loaded in at one and a half minutes using PS4 Pro's stock drive. So, you know, it's all up from there. Meanwhile, PlayStation 5's internal drive and also the external SATA drive both loaded in at 47 seconds, while the external NVMe hit 49 seconds. So again, yeah, some curious variations in results there. It's fascinating stuff. We've touched on it here, but no test would be complete without a comparison uh, between PS5 and PS4 Pro. The setup is simple. We're comparing the stock hard drive inside PS4 Pro against PlayStation 5's internal SSD. But at the same time, we have the same external Samsung 870 QVO SSD running externally on each console. The same drive, two different machines. For a game like Battlefield 5 shown here, the improvement to loading times is of course huge when comparing the stock drives. 
57 seconds loading time to Nordlis is almost halved down to 30 seconds on the PlayStation 5 internal SSD. It's hugely satisfying, but the surprise is in the external SSD tests. The big takeaway is that there's often little difference between PS4 Pro or PS5 when loading via the external Samsung drive. For Battlefield, it's 30 seconds on Pro via external and 29 on PS5. Again, both close to PS5's internal SSD. The same happens on the Touraya mission. Big savings between the stock drives, but the gains when running from an external SSD amount to barely a two second advantage on PS5. Fallout 4 shows something closer to what we'd expect in the ordering. Loading to the Commonwealth has both PS5 tests coming in faster than their pro equivalents. A six second saving is clear in the external SSD drive comparisons, for example. Likewise, for the Diamond City load, we have a radical gain for PS5 at 13 seconds using the external SSD compared to Pro at 21 seconds. Not bad at all. But perhaps the most striking upgrade of the bunch is on CD Projekt Red's Red Engine with The Witcher 3, of course. PS4 Pro's stock drive is notorious for loading Novigrad in one and a half minutes after the main menu, and gladly that drops to 47 seconds on PlayStation 5's internal SSD. It's a nigh on 50% saving, but the external SSD drive comparison also gives PS5 a distinct lead. 47 seconds up against 63 on Pro. In the Xbox Series X testing, when I compared the same drive uh, between Series X and One X, I found the CPU advantage of next gen gave a big speed advantage when combined with solid state storage. Uh, but similar results on the PlayStation side are a touch more elusive. However, some of the titles we're testing here suggest that with both PS4 Pro and PS5 running the same storage, PlayStation 5's uh, CPU advantage decompresses assets quicker, and that can make a big difference to loading times. And it must be said, the external SSD results are variable and occasionally inconsistent, and it's not always the case that PlayStation 5 wins out. There are some outliers. So, for example, this Final Fantasy VII Remake test, when loading to the slums residential area, the internal PS5 drive sees a marked increase in speed in this case, 34 seconds on Pro, dropping to 22 on the newer machine. But it's the external SSD results that stick out. PS4 Pro loads in this area at just under 21 seconds, while PS5 uh, via external storage takes 22. It's the same all over again when loading to Erith's Church, a smaller load but proving the same point. Strangely, PS4 Pro gets here after 16 seconds via external SSD, next to the near 19 seconds on PS5 with the same drive. Really curious and somewhat bizarre results. As an aside to FF7, there is an extra benefit in terms of texture pop-in, around the slums area, for example, when moving away from PS4 Pro's stock drive. Pro's internal HDD has issues streaming in textures fast enough, but in moving to the PlayStation 5 internal drive, or even an external SSD, much of this is fixed. Textures are still poorly filtered and can be of a low quality, even when fully loaded. Uh, also, NPCs still render at a fixed distance, but actual texture streaming, at least, is improved. Of course, we're due for a full PlayStation 5 upgrade for Final Fantasy VII Remake soon, which aims to boost texture quality all around and add other features. So hopefully, uh, NPC pop-in and such like can be fixed too. Likewise, for Cyberpunk, we're waiting for a next-gen release that could revolutionize the way streaming works on PS5 and Series X, along with its loading times. But we'll have to see. In the meantime, this is the best way to play Final Fantasy VII Remake via the PlayStation 4 version. But on that point, Cyberpunk 2077 is another big outlier for loading tests, and there's a big PS4 Pro advantage, unbelievably. For loading the enemy HQ, we see Pro pull ahead on the external SSD, 24 to 25 seconds up against PS5 at 31. PlayStation 4 Pro is consistently faster and there's a few factors that could influence the divide. For example, while Cyberpunk 2077 is still a PS4 native app, it may be the case that the engine taps into the extra memory available on PlayStation 5 and loads in more data for a smoother streaming experience. Just a theory then, 
but there must be some explanation for what looked like identical loading tests giving PS4 Pro a distinct advantage when running from the same drive no less. Overall, there are a few key takeaways here. Firstly, you can take comfort knowing that an external SSD loads games as fast or even marginally faster than your PS5's internal drive. And this is great news because it frees up space for actual PS5 apps. Secondly, you don't have to fork out a fortune for a top-of-the-line NVMe drive at all. There's a limit to how fast PS4 back-compat titles load on PS5, regardless of drive it seems, and a SATA SSD maxes this out well enough. As far as getting the best bang for the buck, I'd recommend a SATA SSD uh, connected with a USB bridge cable. It's a great option. In short, exactly the same conclusion we came to when testing out various solid state storage drives on Xbox Series X with back compat titles. Of course, this isn't quite the end of our story. In our Xbox tests, we had the Seagate expansion drive that allows for an easy, if expensive, way to boost storage for all titles. Sony's solution is an internal M2 slot which, unfortunately, doesn't do anything at the moment. But it will at some point, when whitelisted drives are approved, and we'll be reporting back on that as soon as it happens. But in the meantime, that's it. That's the end of the video, which means it's time to beseech you to like, subscribe, and indeed share this content. Bell ringing. It's an exercise I highly recommend because it means you'll be notified instantly upon the arrival of brand new Digital Foundry content on the channel. And of course, the DF Patreon. Big things are happening there, but in the here and now, join us for pristine quality video downloads and the chance uh, to join our brilliant Discord community. But that's all from me for now. Thanks for watching.